my second year of architecture school when I experienced my first major act of failure. I never showed up to my studio's final review. And what happened was, I was too afraid to present my idea because I thought I had gotten it all wrong. And after that review, an even bigger question came to me. Am I not creative? So what was really happening in this moment of fear? Well, two very distinct educational methodologies were colliding, and I was caught in that very rough transition. My public school education had indoctrinated a very systemized way of learning based on being rewarded for right answers and at all costs avoiding failure. This education was butting up against my studio-based architectural education, which focused on studio-based approach that was focused on exploration and learning by action. In order to really be successful in the studio, I had to completely change the way I was learning. I had to be open to feedback, taking risks, and failure, because this was the only way I was going to come up with anything new. So I stuck around architecture, and I tried this new approach. And what happened was, as I was going through the, art, the studio model, which was based on mentorship, this process of iteration, and this very in intense critique culture, I was actually learning how to deal with open-ended problems. I was learning creativity. So when we look at the number of students going through the educational system on a global scale, we're looking at one-fifth of the world's population. And although we see the world dramatically changing with the rise of global connectivity, smart machines and systems, social technologies, our schools have changed little in the past 100 years. These big drivers of change are demanding new skills in our future workforce, such as social intelligence, cross-cultural competency. Yet, we see that our students are graduating not only from high school, but also from college, lacking many of these skills. So a few years ago, while I was studying urban design at MIT, I met Saeed Arida and David Wang. I was re researching cross-disciplinary educational centers. Saeed was doing research into creativity and the studio model, and David was researching computer science and artificial intelligence. Later, we met Sean Stevens, a hacker maker, and we began to imagine a new model of learning, one that really nurtured creativity and innovation, was cross-disciplinary, and really looked to the future. So we, we began by removing all the barriers as we saw it in education to innovation. We got rid of the grades, the tests, the exams, that all made students more averse to failure. And we really focused on the skills of the future, critical thinking, problem solving, adaptability, and really nurtured on curiosity and imagination. At the core of our pedagogy, we placed the design studio. We designed a series of principles and activities that would help nurture the learning habits that would actually foster creative thinking. These, these included hands-on learning, collaboration, mentorship, a very strong critique culture, and review and presentation. About two years ago, we launched this new model of creative learning and called it NewView. So here's NewView. It's a magnet innovation center for middle and high school students based on the studio model and geared around multidisciplinary collaborative projects. Students come to our program full time for a minimum of 11 weeks, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and the focus is on developing students' creative process and how to approach open-ended problems. As an architect, the design of the studio was very important and really needed to support this idea of collaboration. So we built it as a large, flexible open space, removed all the walls and barriers, brought in large collaborative tables, and the idea was to be able to host a variety of activities, everything from building large kinetic chandelier sculptures to character robots, to doing music production, to hosting large 200-person exhibits. And most importantly, we built a tool shop, which housed a bunch of tools, a 3D printer, and a laser, uh, laser cutter, everything that really supported a culture of making. Our model connects middle and high school students to local universities, companies, and professionals, really bridging the gap between what's happening in the schools and what's happening in the world. Our hope is that for students to leave our program and go back to the schools, their world, and their life as agents of change really char charged with the creative confidence to change things. Our model is located in Cambridge, 
at the heart of the city, between MIT and Harvard, very close to many startups and local companies. Every term, we have about a, a number of students who come from schools, public, private, independent, charter, homeschooled kids, who come to our center. And it's this idea of mixing perspectives and bringing together a very diverse group of people with the hope that we bring together a group of creatives who can collectively think together and creatively share and learn. At the core of our model are the coaches. Every term, we curate a set of coaches who come from a variety of backgrounds. They're professionals, they're entrepreneurs, they're builders, inventors, musicians, makers, thinkers. We like to think of them as master tinkers who really thrive on play and exploration. The basic building block of our model is the two-week-long studio module, where students work in small teams to come up with a project. The two-week studio module is based on this idea of iteration, or the idea of prototyping, testing, analyzing, and basically creating a new product. At the heart of the studio is this process of critique, where a student presents their project and a coach gives them advice. The idea is that to shift students' protect perspectives and really develop flexibility of, of mind. The, the idea is that by going through this critique process again and again, students begin to apply multiple perspectives and begin to refine their ideas again and again until it becomes a natural learning process. This two-week studio module fits into our larger 11-week framework, where students go through a series of four two-week-long studios. And the idea is that this idea of iteration happens not only at the scale of the product, but also at the scale of the process, as students refine their creative process by working with different teams on different projects. Each student's path through these various studios is unique. And the idea is that by shifting through these multiple studios, students begin to see the connections between various topics and fields, can apply their learning from one studio to the next, and really begin to see how ideas can exist in multiple arenas. Our idea of success really lies in the idea of seeing and doing. In this uh, studio called Cycling Solutions, students developed a pedal-powered water, water filtration system. The amazing thing was that, not that these students came up with a great idea, and they actually came up with a really inventive mechanical solution, but that they worked on 15 different prototypes over two weeks to get to their final solution. These kids were really seen differently. Our projects ranged from the very low-tech to very high-tech systems-based solutions. In the iEnergy Studio, Students built a distributed renewable energy system with, in collaboration with an energy company and a nonprofit. The fact is that when you give students very challenging projects, you believe in them and you create a very supportive environment so they can test their ideas to the farthest limits, students will take on those challenges and excel. This past December, I took a group of our students to India to field test the social mobile collaborative learning games they had designed for slum youth living in India. This project was in collaboration with Sesame Workshop, the nonprofit end of Sesame Street, and involved work with developers in Sri Lanka and research teams across India. This project really showcased the power of global collaboration and the simple idea of kids designing games for kids. As an education entrepreneur and designer, I'm building new view with a very passionate team to develop the next generation of creative thinkers. Together, we hope the world will see learning a little differently. Thank you.